Hey guys, I'm Kyle Dermay and I'm a U-Haul hitch professional. Installing a trailer hitch on your Chevy Corvette that can lead to some amazing adventures, whether that's biking, camping, or even towing a U-Haul trailer just about anywhere in North America. Today we're gonna to be installing a U-Haul exclusive custom hitch designed by one of our lead senior engineers, Mr. Ed Vitruba, here at the U-Haul Tech Center in Tempe, Arizona. Let's go ahead and break down that install. You'll need the tools seen here to complete this installation. All right, to get this install started, we're gonna remove the lower fascia panel. To do that, we're gonna start by removing each of the red reflector lenses on each side. We're gonna use a small uh, trim panel removal tool to do that. And we'll repeat that process on the other side. All right, next we're gonna remove these vents on each side. You're gonna start by popping it out at the bottom. Take your trim panel tool and get it started. I like to use my finger and hold it. Just kind of slowly work your way up this panel, popping it out as you go. And now we're gonna repeat that process on the passenger side. Our next step is gonna to be to remove six 10 millimeter bolts. We've got one here, here, two behind the license plate, and two on the other side. We'll start by removing our, our license plate bolts here at the top. After removing the six Hess screws from the top of the fascia panel, we're gonna move down and remove two near the exhaust. All right, now we're gonna remove 10 fasteners. We've got 10 932nds uh, hex nuts down here at the bottom. We've got one, two, and three, four, and five. Now here on the passenger side, we've got six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now with all of our fasteners removed, we're ready to remove this complete lower fascia panel. It's held in by some clips along the top edge near this, this line. Um, it's also got a couple of clips near the bottom. So we're gonna start by popping those out first down at the bottom. Start it and do it the other side. And then we're just gonna slowly work our way along this top edge to remove that fascia completely. And we can set it off to the side. All right, now that we've got our fascia off, we're gonna go ahead and remove four 10 millimeter bolts holding on our rear energy absorber for the bumper. All right, before we remove our rear energy absorber, we actually have a small electrical connector here held onto it by a clip. So we're gonna use a plastic trim tool to go ahead and pop that clip out of place. Now we're ready to pull our rear energy absorber off. We can start by gently pulling back. Towards the center, we've got a couple of clips that if we gently pull on the upper fascia, we can get those out. All right, so now we're gonna lower our exhaust by removing four bolts from these rear hangers using a 13 millimeter socket. Okay, so now we're gonna install in, in our, our receiver tube in place. We're gonna temporarily uh, clamp it into place here in the center of our bumper support beam. We've gone ahead and we've marked the center line of our bumper support beam here, and we've also marked the center of our receiver tube. By taking some uh, vice grip C-clamps, we were able to drop those down in between the exhaust, and then we can come up, put our receiver tube in place, and clamp it temporarily so that we can do some final measurements. We centered it in between this bumper support beam, we also measured the distance to the center of the bottom holes at one and three sixteenths of an inch. So you wanna measure from the right side or the passenger side, as well as from the driver's side. We even went as far as to use a small torpedo level to make sure that it was perfectly straight on both sides so that when we drill our holes, we're gonna be nice and perpendicular so that we get a nice straight shot right into our bumper support beam which is gonna be behind this once it gets installed. 
All right, so now that we've got our receiver uh, assembly in place, we're gonna use it as a template to drill the four holes needed to install this receiver. We're gonna start with a 3 16 drill bit to get our pilot hole, and we're gonna make sure to keep this drill bit completely perpendicular to get a nice straight shot through the bumper support beam. All right, so now that we've got marks for our four holes, we're gonna go ahead and remove the clamp and remove the receiver assembly so that we can finish drilling our holes without um, accidentally moving this or, or nicking it. Okay, so we've got our pilot holes drilled. We're gonna go back with our half inch drill bit and drill our final hole. Um, always be careful, word of caution, um, to check the backside of whatever you're drilling through. Make sure there's no electrical, no components back there that you're gonna drill through. And also important to remind you that you are drilling through two metal surfaces here. So once you get through the first surface, there is the backside of this tube that we're gonna be drilling through as well. All right, so now that we've got our four half inch holes drilled, we're ready to install our backing plate. We did find that this, this was a little difficult to get into position. So we, we found that we needed to kind of come in and finagle it through. So this really helps to get an extra set of hands, somebody to help pull down on the exhaust while you kind of, kind of weasel this thing into position. So we'll go ahead and show you how to do that now. You can see it's gonna sit just like this. All right, so we've got four half inch diameter bolts with a 19 millimeter head um, and a 19 millimeter flange nut for the other side. We're gonna start by bringing our receiver into position and sliding in our bolt with our flat washer. This will help hold the receiver tube into place or in place while we match everything else up. So now we're gonna take our reinforcement plate. We're gonna put our hand in through the center exhaust and we're gonna try to get one hole onto one of the two bolts that we previously installed and then use our flange nut to secure it and hold it by just gently starting to uh, thread it on. Okay, now that we have the top part of our receiver uh, and our reinforcement plate behind it, uh, lightly secured, we're gonna come in and we're gonna install the bottom reinforcement by installing the bolt through the bottom part of the receiver and hopefully just bringing it right through the back. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now that we've got our four uh, bolts with our flange nuts in place, we're ready to torque down to manufacturer specifications. Uh, this is a 19 millimeter socket with a four inch extension. Um, the directions and instructions for the uh, hitch will be in the link below. Okay, we've got some trimming that we need to do on our energy absorber and the instructions need us to uh, cut these ribs off because this is going to sit over our receiver assembly and we need to come down a quarter inch. Um, it's not an exact science. Um, this is a little difficult because of the constraints of the space, um, but do your best. Um, we're just gonna cut these ribs off as I've marked with the red marker and then we'll come down as best we can and trim out the quarter inch uh, from the grooves to uh, give us the clearance we need. On the outer facing side of the energy absorber, we trimmed off a full three inches per the instructions. All right, per the instructions, we've gone ahead and removed three inches off the top of the energy absorber. Uh, that should give us enough clearance that when the energy absorber is reinstalled, we've got enough room to insert a pin and clip uh, for our receiver tube. We're now gonna go ahead and reinstall it uh, back onto the bumper support beam. Gotta kinda wiggle it in here a little bit. It's a nice, it's a tight fit. and make sure to reconnect our clip holding our electrical connector on here. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our four 10 millimeter fasteners to secure our energy absorber back onto the bumper support beam. 
All right, so we've reinstalled our energy absorber back onto the vehicle. We're now ready to make our last and final trim on the outer fascia panel. This is by far the most important cut on the vehicle because this is what you will see every time you flip up the license plate. We wanna make sure we measure twice, cut once. First thing we did was take a center mark with our wax marker right in the middle of the license plate frame. We then measured 5 16 from the, uh, the small protrusion that comes out around the license plate. And we're using a template that we made here. And this is essentially the, the exact cut diagram with using two, two and a half inch hole saw uh, with a small bridge in between with just two inches wide. Overall length is eight and a half inches. Uh, this small cardboard cutout is gonna be our template to get us exactly a perfect outline of the area by which we'll be trimming. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and mark that off now. So now that we have our rough outline, we can ensure that it's straight. We can take a couple additional measurements, make sure that we're exactly centered in between. Um, but I think we're now ready to go ahead and, and cut. Um, we're gonna use a two and a half inch hole saw for our radius edges here on the end. And then we'll use the air saw for our straight lines down the middle. So now that uh, we've trimmed our outer fascia panel, we're ready to reinstall the exhaust brackets. Uh, make sure your 10 millimeter bolts line up onto each side. We're gonna grab a friend to push up on the exhaust. It's a little bit heavy to do it by yourself. He'll push while I put in the, the two 10 millimeter bolts. All right, we're ready for reassembly of our uh, rear bumper fascia. It's a little tricky. Remember that you've got your camera here and you've also got a trunk button. So we're gonna bring it up right underneath. It's a little bit goofy, but once you get it started, Okay, with our fascia reinstalled, we're ready to uh, insert the eight bolts that were holding the top side of our fascia. All right, with our uh, eight 10 millimeter bolts up top, now we're ready for the 10, 930 seconds. We're gonna use our 930 seconds nut driver to get those all back in down here. Uh, we've got five on the driver and five on the passenger side. All right, so one of the coolest things about this hitch is that it's got a piano hinge for our license plate holder. That's so that the license plate will actually cover up our hitch when not in use. Uh, to do that, we've got a couple of uh, Allen nuts with a flange nut. Uh, we're gonna use the pre-existing holes on each side of the plastic nut that was used to originally uh, hold on the license plate. Next, we're ready to attach our license plate. So again, we've got a small Allen bolt with an acorn nut uh, for the outside. Okay, our final part of our assembly is reinstalling our uh, reflectors. Just pop those back in. And our vents on the sides, those are gonna get popped right back in as well. With our hitch installed and the vehicle pulled on the level ground, we wanna give you some important measurements for some of your hitch accessories. So this is an inch and a quarter receiver. The distance from the pinhole to the edge of the bumper was three inches. From the pinhole to the edge of the license plate was six and a half inches. From the top of the receiver tube to level ground was 19 inches. These measurements should help you determine the length, rise, or drop of any of your hitch accessories. That concludes our installation. If you have any questions about the product seen here or want to schedule an installation with a U-Haul Hitch professional, please visit us online at uhaulhitches.com.